It's time now for the Words of Knowledge broadcast with Pastor Alan Harrington, pastor of the World's Church of the Living God, located at 2110 Glass Street, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Now, here's Pastor Alan Harrington.
Lord God, he is with you. I won't give up. And sometimes you'll be tossed from side to side. No, I won't give up. And those so-called friends, oh, they're going to come and they'll stab you in your back. But don't you give up. It's such a wonderful blessing to be coming your way again. By this way, uh, of, of however you get the broadcast, through YouTube, uh, through the radio, however. I thank God for you. Thank God for uh, allowing me to, uh, to be steward uh, of his word. And I thank God for you. I thank God for you uh, uh, allowing me to come into your, your homes, into your, your space, into your inner circle to share with you the word of God. The Lord God has been so good to us throughout our lives, throughout our lifetimes, even before we knew him. You know, the Bible even teaches us that, how that when we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. He, he shed his blood for our sins. So we have been born again. Those, those who have, we've been saved, <laughs> washed in the word of God, washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, in, in the blood of the Lamb, and and, and we're left here with different missions. The, the primary one is to promote the gospel of the kingdom, to promote the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, to teach about him, to preach about him, to proclaim victory through the Lord Jesus Christ, and to live the way he wants us to. Now, the Bible teaches us that we have. That we, we have, if any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature, a new creation. He is a new creation in Christ Jesus. He has a, a new spirit, a new anointing in him to help him live this life. And, and uh, so evident, we, we, uh, you, you just, in, in anything you do, anything you, you want to accomplish or achieve, you, you have to work at it, go at it, study about it, uh, get become educated, get yourselves educated, and, uh, and, 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 and seek it, you know, research it. Now, uh, the, the book teaches us to, in the book of First John, we're going to read a, a few scriptures in, in just a second, how that it talks to the people of God, that ye are of God little children. If you've been born again, you, you've been saved, you have, you've been invited into God's family, the anointing of Christ is in you, on you. It, it, it's there. You belong to him. And, and the Bible teaches us that we, that we have overcome the world. That we, We've overcome the world. We are overcomers because greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world. That he, he, the anointing of Christ, that spirit of, of, his, of God's own anointing is in us. It keeps us. Now we have that. We have th that anointing. We have that, that spirit. But God wants us to, to live this life and, and we're, with the understanding that everything is not going to be handed to us on a silver platter. 
You know, you, God's not going to make his children rotten, just rotten little little kids running around here. They're, every time they get a scratch, they, they scream and holler for daddy. Or every, every time they meet a, a, a challenge of, of any sort, oh, they want God to just fix it all, to just move it all. We, we can't live on, the, on this earth, in, on this planet, like we're going to live without challenge. Jesus said it. He talked about it. He said, in, in this world, you shall have tribulations. You know what tribulation is. You're going to be tried. You're going to, be, you're, going to, you're going to run into some difficulties, some challenge and trouble. But be of good cheer. That means be, be, have the joy of the Lord in you. Have faith. Trust God. Be a believer. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So we have that hope, knowing that th through our daily challenges, no matter what they are, that, that we will get through. God brings through. And sometimes we're, we're faced with some life-altering, life, sometimes life-challenging, just, just challenges, you know, life-threatening challenges. But God gets us through. And many of you right now can, can think, if you just look back for a brief second, and you can, you can look back at your lives and, and when you were lost, and since you have been saved, since you've, you've become a child of God by the grace of God, you can look back at your lives and, 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 and remember some things that it, naturally, it didn't seem like you would get through it. It just seemed as though for a minute that you weren't going to make it, but you believed and, and, and you, you persevered. You, 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 why? Because you had the hope of God's word. You, you had his spirit that, that prompted you, promoted you to, to keep going, to keep trusting God, to keep moving. And God brought you through. He brought you through. So we're going we're gonna to get into the word. Most of all, first of all, give God glory for every achievement, every accomplishment, no, no matter how small it might seem to be, for, for every, every step that, that you're able to make in life, or everything you've ever give God glory, give God credit, because without him, none of it, your life wouldn't even be possible. Without him, it's all about him, and he wants glory. And that's why we're going to just, we're going to read a few scriptures and then we're going to get on in, into something a little different. In the book of Proverbs, if you'll turn with me, Proverbs, the, the third chapter. Let's see here. And let, let's start here. We're not going to read it all, just, just some of it. The, the Bible tells us in the word of God to trust in the Lord with all thine heart, with every fiber of your being, with everything, it, the, the very essence of, of, of your spirit, your soul, who you are, your strength, that you trust in the Lord with all your mind, with all your heart, and lean not to your own understanding. Always trust God and do things God's way. Live God's way, no matter what you do. Pray God's way. Treat people the way the Lord tells us, the way, the way Jesus has, has taught us to treat one another, how we're to, to, to love each other, to, to forgive one another, to care about each other. Do, do ever, no matter what it is, lean not to your own understanding, but trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And in, in the sixth verse, in all thy ways, in every aspect of your life, every new venture in your life, every hope, every dream you might have, everything you want to accomplish, every thing you want to build in your life, whether it's in your family or business or otherwise, that you acknowledge God in all your ways. Acknowledge God. You go to him and to acknowledge God just doesn't mean that uh, you just say, well, okay, Lord, uh, I, I, you've already got your mind made up. It doesn't mean that. It, it means that, that you, 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 acknowledge, you seek his guidance. You seek his leadership. You seek God's counsel, and he will, and this is what he'll do. You acknowledge him. You, you talk to him. You pray. You seek his advice, and, and you, you, you want to be led. You really want to be led by God's spirit, and, and the Bible says, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and what will he do? He will. He will believe this, brothers and sisters in Christ. He will direct your paths, our paths, my paths. If we do acknowledge God in, in all that, that, that we go to do. And, and the, the thing is, 
It doesn't, make, it, it doesn't uh, mean that we'll never run into difficulty, uh, that we'll, we'll uh, accomplish, that we'll just jump over and run over hurdle after hurdle after hurdle after hurdle, or, or, or get into uh, challenges, uh, challenge after challenge after challenge, w w without suffering at times some kind of setback. It, it doesn't mean that. That's, that's the beauty of life. That's the beauty of this, this life, and it helps us and teaches us to trust God all the more. There, it, even, you, you, have to, you have to know this. All champions train, no matter what. And, and the Bible tells us that, that, that we're more than conquerors through him that loved us, through Christ Jesus. We, we vanquished already by, by being saved, by being children of the kingdom, by God taking us as his own, by, by, by God placing and setting his seal upon us, by being born into the family of God, being the sons of God, sons and daughters of God, that we have already vanquished far beyond just mere victory. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Now, the thing about conquerors, the, the thing about, about <coughs> athletes, no matter what it is, the thing about scientists, no matter who it is, no matter what, everybody trains, everybody studies, you know, their art, their discipline, everybody does. You, even though you're born, and some people are, they're born with, it seems like natural abilities. That's God having placed that seed in their life. That God, God did it. God did it. Like God told Jeremiah, you've heard the message many times, that, that uh, even when you were in, in the womb, I knew you. Before you, you came forth, I, I brought you forth out of the womb. I called you. I anointed you. I chose you for a certain purpose. So that's, that's the, the choosing of God and the anointing of God while we're in the womb. That's why people are born with what it seems like just natural, innate just abilities that we have. God-given gifts. But even with God-given gifts, you must train. Some people seem to be natural-born athletes. The, even the best of the best train. The best of the best get knocked on their behind sometimes, okay? They, they train. They, they're, not, they're not perfect. They, they never stop learning or studying the, the, their craft or what they do. So this is what we have to realize, that we have to learn. We have to learn, no matter what it is, no matter whether it's science or, or, or research or no, no matter what, whether it's, it's woodwork, carpentry, I don't, I don't care what it is, no matter what it is, if it's some kind of uh, athletic uh, something you want to accomplish or achieve, everybody trains. We're good soldiers in Christ Jesus. Good soldiers don't just, they're not just born good soldiers. Champions just aren't born Champions, they train, they, and this is what we have to do. They might have the natural ability, but the skill, listen now, the skill itself comes with training and study and education and experience. You know, it takes it. So in order to achieve, and, and, and we're to do this, man, we're to live on, on, on this life to achieve and to conquer and, and to, to accomplish things, for, for God's sake, most of all, first of all, for God's sake, we want the Lord to get complete and total glory for every victory in our lives because every victory we, that we receive, it might seem like we fought for it, that we've done it, but it's really been handed to us by God, but through his wisdom, his skill, his direction, his strength, his knowledge, no matter what it is, it all comes from God. So Proverbs, quickly, we're going to, Get out of here in just a second. Proverbs, the fourth chapter. I'm going to read just a little bit of this. Okay, Proverbs 4. And uh, let's see. Let's, let, let's start here with about the fifth verse. Okay? All right. Proverbs 4, about the fifth verse. So the Word of God teaches us this to get wisdom. How many times have you heard that, you know? To get wisdom. And what is wisdom? Wisdom is the practical application of knowledge. Wisdom is knowing what to do with what you know. You can know a lot of things, but if you don't know how to apply that knowledge to your life, if you don't, if, if, wisdom is, is having discernment, being able to see 
what's right, what's wrong, what's good, what's bad, how to use knowledge, or who you're dealing with in your life, whatever. Wisdom is a powerful tool. That's why the, the Bible tells us in the New Testament, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all men liberally, if they ask, all believers, all people who trust God, and they want to use his, his wisdom, his insight for the good of God, not just selfishly, not just so I can have this and I can accomplish this and this will be mine. And uh, it's not about that. It's, it's about every, every gift, every good, perfect gift does come from God in a way. And it's about sharing and in the kingdom of God, sharing with people and sharing with the people of God and, and, and sharing in life, being able to, to achieve in life and to show forth the praises and glory of God in our lives. That's what it's all about. So wisdom is knowing what to do with what you know, knowing what to do with your family, knowing how to how to raise your children, how to steer them if they seem to have a a, a gift for a certain craft or whatever, how to to, to help mold them and, and and to direct them into achieving certain things in their lives, how to develop their intellect for, and most of all to to raise them up. See, it's it's a parent's job to raise a child up to the Lord, to raise them in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. That's, that's, so we, w wisdom will cover a lot of ground. So, and, and we know that Jesus Christ, the Bible tells so us, it, he <laughs> is the express wisdom of God. He is the express personification of God. He is God and, and, and God by wisdom, we, we won't have time to get all of it, but it's by wisdom that God created the heavens and earth, all the universes. It's by his own wisdom. And wisdom make, makes a statement say, well, I was there with God in the beginning, before the earth was ever formed, before the foundations of the, were ever laid, before the mountains and the hills were brought forth. Wisdom said in Proverbs the eighth chapter that I was there. So when, when God said, let us make man in our own name, who, he was speaking with his, his, his own personality, his own spirit of wisdom. Wisdom. Let us make man in our own image. So, so wisdom means a lot. So God is telling everybody to get wisdom. Wisdom, man, the, the, the value, the wisdom is more valuable than rubies because if you have the wisdom, you, eventually you'll have the, the rubies. But see, that's not what it's all about. See, that's what you have to understand. It's not all about the rubies. See, some people want the gift. They want the, the rewards without having the principle of the, un that's what, what understanding, without knowing how things really work, the understanding. So we're to get the wisdom of God, and it says to get, listen, get understanding, forget it not. Please don't forget it. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not. Don't forsake wisdom. And she, and if you, and if you love her, you keep her, you're faithful to wisdom, she shall do what? Preserve thee. Love her. If you love her, and she shall, she'll keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing. It didn't say that just getting your hands on a bunch of money, because some people get, get money one day, and, and then the next day, the next two weeks, they're, they're, they're flat. They don't know what to do. You know, they, they, they waste and get every, their, their lives, they live a life of ruin. So everything that could be valuable sort of just sifts through their hands. It, it, it's not lasting. Wisdom is the principal thing. That means that wisdom should be the main part of your life, the, the main character in your life, the, the main thing that you seek after, the main thing that, that, that you love and that you cherish is the wisdom of God. It's the principal thing. Therefore, saith the Lord, saith the word of God, get wisdom and with all you are getting, with all you are getting and you're seeking after, after God and, and, and his spirit, with all you are getting, do what? Get understanding. That means to understand, to know how things work, to know how life works, to, to know how relationships work, to know, to know how, how your mind works, to know how, how people work, to have discernment. You can't know how things work with, without first being able to see. To, to discern, to perceive what's good, what's bad, what, what's right for you and what's not. You've got to know how things work. So, and, and it, it tells us, let's just read on down just, just a little bit. And it says, uh, exalt her. If you exalt wisdom, 
If you exalt wisdom, she shall promote thee, and she'll bring you to honor when you embrace her. See, but it can't be, you, you can't deceive wisdom. Did you know that? You can't, you, you can't uh, play wisdom. You can't con wisdom. Well, I'm going to pretend to love her. I'm going to pretend to embrace her. She knows whether you love her or not. You know what I mean? She, she knows whether you truly embrace her in your life or not. So you can't just, you can't play her. You know, some, some, some men play women, some women play men. You can't play her like you would some mark on, on the street. You can't, no, you, you can't deceive wisdom. You can't deceive God. Come on, let's, let's be for real about this thing. You can't do that. So you, you can't do and, and go through the motions just to get the rewards that come with her. You've got to truly, fully embrace her from your heart. And it's not about just, I'm doing it so I can get what, what comes with her. I'm not, I'm, I won't embrace, I'm just embracing her so I can get the, the, the benefits package that comes with her. It's not about that. It's because of her, because you love her. You cherish her, you embrace her, you love God. You know, wisdom is a gift from God. It's part of God. So you embrace her. And, and the Bible says that she will exalt her and she shall promote thee. She'll bring you to honor when you do embrace her. And it, it says on down here in, in the list. Let's just jump down because I'm going to have to move on and get off this. And it says in, in the... Uh, 13th verse, okay. 10th verse, okay. Hear, O my son, and, and receive my sayings. And the, if you believe the word of God, if you follow the word of God, the years of your life shall be many. I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I've led you in right paths. When you go, if you follow, if you, if you follow the, 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 the advice of God, if you follow the word of God, if you follow wisdom, if you, you cherish instruction and, and you cherish teaching and, and you do cling to it and you, you exercise and you live in it, you live by it. When you go, your steps shall not be straightened. You won't be narrowed and, and you won't always find yourself uh, like at a handicap. And when you run it, thou shalt not stumble. Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Welcome instruction in your life. Let her not go. Keep her. Keep instruction. Why? For she is your life. And some people don't realize that. And sometimes you can, you, you try, you can, you, and Jesus knew that some people, he couldn't teach, he understood that. And he said it so many ways, uh, so many times, di different times. Some people just, they can't get it. They just don't seem to get it. They won't, you know, so, and, and you feel sorry for them, but there's nothing you can do. Nothing you can do about it. When people embrace instruction and they, they love it and they, they keep instruction, the Bible says you keep her for she is your life. And some people have, have sort of resisted instruction that, that, that was for their life. And it might have cost them. Some people have at times uh, disobeyed some instruction that cost them their health, that cost them their life one way or another. So we're going we're gonna to move on. We, we, we have to talk about this. This is about life, living life, and being prepared to live life. N not just, just here. You, we, we, why? We're here for a purpose. Everybody, we're here for a purpose. And you can have, you, did you know you can have the anointing of God in you? You can have the spirit over, of the overcomer in you. But if you never, if you never trained, if you never prepared, the Bible even tells, the, the, the Bible tells us in, in Timothy, I believe it is, to endure hardness as good soldiers of Jesus Christ. And it, it, it also tells us to study, to show thyself approved unto God. It doesn't matter how, how much spirit people think they have. You need to study the word. You need to take hold of God's word and read and pray and, and, and look into the, the, the things of God. They're valuable. I, I'm not saying strive. You don't strive with, with, and try to just know stuff just to be knowing it. That's, that, that doesn't make any sense at all. I just to, to uh, for pride's sake, say, well, I know this and that. I, I, I to lord yourself over somebody. It's, it's not about that. It's that your heart and your mind, your, your life in it, your soul is involved and you're involved with God and you love God, you love the things of God. And, and so you involve yourself and you have 
that, that innate, that, that spirit of, of, of God in you, that the spirit of the overcomer in you, he's already overcome. So what you, you study, you hone the skills, the gifts that God has given you. The more you exercise in something, the, the better you become. The more you exercise your body, the stronger you become. Is, is, is that true? Is that not? The, the, the more you, 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 you try to outpace, and that's what we do. The Bible teaches us to, to run this race that, that we have with patience, you know, and they're about to stay in their own lane. You're not racing against brother so-and-so or rib so-and-so or sister so-and-so. You, you, no, you, no, 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 you're running your own race. That's all. And, and, and what you're trying to do is, in so many words, if you want to put it this way, you want to beat your best time. You want to grow, okay? You're not in competition. We're not in competition with anybody. But you just want to, to grow and to go for God's sake, man. That's, that's what it's all about. So study. Study the Word of God. Anything you, you, you get involved in, we'll, we'll read it here in a minute. In, in life, man, go at it. Go at it. Put your, 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 your skills to it. Put your mind to it. Exercise yourself in it and never, and never please don't forget this, never ignore God in anything you go to do. Don't put God out of, your, out, of, out of your life, out of your business. I don't care what it is. Out of your life, out, out of your education, no matter what it is, welcome him. Include God in everything you do. Willingly include God in everything you do, and you will be a blessed man or woman. God will bless your life and love him. Love him. Take hold of the tools that he gives and, 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 and use them. Did you know that we can have, we have the good tools at times, but we, don't, we just don't use what God has given us. So let's, let's do it, man. We'll, we'll get to it. Let's, let's read this. In Ecclesiastes, let's see. Let's, let's go to about the, the ninth chapter since we're talking about that. Okay, we're not going to read all of this. Okay, we, we think we, we've been over this, but we, we, have, we have to get it. Okay, all right, Ecclesiastes, ninth chapter. And let's start it with the seventh verse. Go thy way and eat thy bread with joy. So God wants you to have joy, to enjoy your life on this planet, yes. And drink thy wine with a merry heart, for God now accepts thy works. When did he accept them? When, when, when you accepted him. <laughs> when you accepted his way, and, and in your mind, in your heart, it's, to you it's not my will, but thy will be done. You know, and, and you've been clothed and, and, and filled up and fitted with the righteousness of God. Okay, so God now accepts your works because it's all about him. It's all about the work that God has done on you and in, in your life. So, so he says, let your garments be always white and let your head lack, lack no ointment. Always do the right thing and, and portray the righteousness of God in your life and, and live in, through, and by, and under the anointing of God. Live joyfully with the wife whom thou lovest all the days of thy vanity which he has given thee under the sun all the days of thy vanity, for that is thy portion in this life and in thy labor that thou takest under the sun. So God wants you to enjoy your relationships with your wife or your husband, whatever, you know. He wants you to have good family life. He, want, he wants you to enjoy that. And, and, and family shouldn't be a place of, of misery and depression and dread. No, man, the joy of the Lord should, should be just all in it and part of everything that, that you do. And also, the, the, this word labor, that means that you have to work at things in life. Not, nothing just happens because it's you, you or me. Nothing just, no, it doesn't happen for that reason. We have to work at things that God has given us, even as, as God told Israel when he brought them out of, out of Egypt. He, he said, I'm, I'm going to give you a land that, that just flows with milk and honey. And, and look at all this beautiful, great land. It's, it's got some of everything in it. The, 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 the fruit and labor of other people are there. Now, you have to go and do You have to take it, though. You've got to fight for it. And that's the way it is with believers, man. What's yours is yours. You have, to, you have to labor in life to accomplish your victory. You don't get a a gold medal in the Olympics just because you, you showed up at the race. I mean, you know, and, and remember now, we're not in competition against anybody. Or anything. We, we, we want to do the best we can with our lives, with, with the word of God, with God's word. 
and the tools that God gives us, we want to do it for Jesus. We want to do it all for, for the glory of God. And you won't just get a, a gold medal just, just for being there. Sitting around. You've got to accomplish some things. And in order to be a, a champion, man, you, you've got to put forth some effort. You've got to put, it, you've got to put in the work. You have to. And, and, and that's, a, that's in the heart of a believer that they, they love being a part. They love digging in. They, they love getting, when, when times get tough, man, they, they still, they will not relinquish their faith in God. And I'm not saying they're able to smile through every trial, but they, they hope through every trial. They trust through every trial. They, they, they do. They, they, they stand up. They just don't lie down when challenge appears. They, they stand up to challenge just the same, though they might get knocked down sometimes. That's a believer. And that's the way we're to live. So there's labor in, in this life. So the book tells us in the 10th verse that whatsoever your hand finds to do, whatever it is, what, whatever it is, Whatever it is that you believe and you, you, in, your, in your heart of heart, you, your spirit, you feel that you, you're put here for, that you're inclined to, to, to get involved in. You feel like it's just your, you know, part of you, part of you, who you are, your nature. And it's good. Now, good things, not just, I'm not talking about trash and garbage. Good things, okay? It says, whatsoever your hand finds to do, do it with your might. Do it with enthusiasm. Give it all you got. Get involved. Get involved with it. And, it. and that means that you're going to have to put in some time. You're going to have, you're going to, have to put in some study. If, if, uh, you, you, don't, you don't, just don't wake up one day and, and uh, you decide you, you're going to be, a, say, say a lawyer, I don't care what it is. Or I don't care if it's a, a plumber, what, whatever it is. <laughs> you know, you, you don't just decide that, you, well, I'm going to be it. So you go out and you start doctoring. <laughs> Or you start plumbing, and you know nothing about it. it. Just doesn't happen. You might have the innate skill, the abilities it might seem to be that, but you have to acquire the skill. You have to study. You have to work. You 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 have to work at it. You have to learn and experience. You have to put have, get some experience in you by practicing what you believe is, is what you want to do. You have to get involved in it. You have to you have to build it. So it says to whatever your hand finds to do, do it with your might. For there is no work or device or knowledge or wisdom in the grave where you are going. And that's, that, that, that's the truth for all of us. That once we leave here, it's over. So whatever your, your, your lot is in life right now, you better enjoy it. Because one, one day, sooner or later, the, 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 this chapter of the book is going to close, for, come to an end for all of us. For one, if Jesus tarries, it's going to happen. So do it with your might. So he said, I returned, and I saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, uh-oh, nor the battle to the strong, nor yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor. Listen, favor doesn't always happen to men of skill, but time and chance happens to them all. Uh-oh, isn't that something? Time and chance. So one way or another, we're going to have opportunities. Everybody's going to have a time and chance. But are you prepared? That's the whole thing. Some people are never prepared to accept or to walk through the doors of opportunity. They've not developed themselves. Everybody has a chance. One way or another, opportunity is going to present to, to everybody. But if you're not prepared, folks, this is what this is all about. If, you have, if your life is not prepared, if you've not prepared your life, your mind, when that door of opportunity opens for you, you're just a lost ball in high weeds. And that, that's the thing. See, that happens for everybody. One way, one way or the other, sooner or later, a door is going to be open. Opportunity is going to present itself. But you know what's even better? See, wise men and women, boys and girls, and it happens every day. Opportunities come every day. They, they, they do, and people recognize that. And they're prepared. See, that's why it's, it's best you prepare your life. Prepare your life through education. Please, don't, don't, young folks, please. Do, do, not, do not feel like uh, uh, being, be, getting ed your education is a waste. It's not. It, it, it's not at all. It pays off. It, it'll do you good. D don't think that doing good is a waste. It's not. It's all good. That learning ab about life and God and uh, uh, learning a discipline or a skill or wh whatever it is, it's so very important. It all pays off. And when I s education, I, I, I know uh, university or whatever isn't for everybody. Some people have, have skills. 
skills. I mean, what people call sometimes in, in, in sports like mad skills. Some people have some just mad life skills. They're good, they de but it just doesn't happen. They develop it, they pursue it, they work at it. So they do, so, so they, they, they're presented with opportunities from time to time. So opportunities present themselves to people every day one way or another. But you know what? But every day, opportunities are created. Some people create their own opportunities, one way or the other, through the experience, the, what they've already researched and studied or developed or whatever, and, and they create opportunities for themselves. So, so don't just be one of those, sitting around twiddling your thumbs, I'm just waiting on my opportunity to show up. See, you might have shown up, and, 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 but you, you weren't prepared and you missed it. So develop yourself, develop your life, and create some opportunities for yourself, okay? So that, that, that's, what, that's what that's talking about. So we're gonna, we're gonna look at something, and, 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 and yeah, you know, time and chance happen, happens to them all, that, I believe that, you know? Things come, but whatever you do, whatever you have to do now on this planet, you give it all you got. Don't, don't be lax or, or slack. And, and what you decide to do, the way you pursue life, the way you go at life, live it with vigor and vim and gusto. Let's, let's, let's go to the book of, of uh, Kings right quick. Let's see. I, I, I think I it did. I did. I, I checked that, okay? The book of uh, Second Kings. Second Kings, very quickly, just to show you something here. All right, let's see here. Second Kings. And let's, let's go to uh, the 13th chapter. Praise God Almighty. Now I tell you, God's good, isn't it? God is good. Oh, man, I think I heard somebody say all the time. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's, let's just get it. 2 Kings, the, the 13th chapter, and let's start here with the 14th verse. Now, Elisha was fallen sick, so... Bad things do happen to good, good people. Bad things happen to God's people sometimes. Bad things happen to God's men. Look, all, all the, the prophets and men of, men of all, those people lived through some challenges. Some people were martyred, everything. They, they went through so much, and they were dedicated, faithful men, and, and, and some, God let, let them live until, you know, they, it was time for them to just go, you know, time, time for them to, 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 to pass on. As people, some people call it transitioning, to, to go to the grave, to go to sleep. You know, so things happen. So, so people get sick. Elisha got sick, the Bible says. He fought, he fallen sick and of his sickness wherever he died, the same sickness that he died from, whatever it was. And Joash, the king of Israel, came down to him and wept over his face and said, Oh, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. You know, he, you know, he, he, he looked at this, this prophet, this man of God, at, as a father figure, somebody who, who would to, to advise him, a king. This was the king of Israel who, who looked to this man in a fatherly manner to, for advice, for guidance, for counsel, whatever, okay? And Elisha said unto him, take your bow and arrows. And he took unto him bow and arrows. And he said to the king of Israel, put thine hand upon the bow. And he put his hand upon it, and Elisha put his hands upon the king's hands. And he said, open the window eastward. And he opened it. Then Elisha said, shoot. Open the window, shoot this arrow. And he shot. And he said, and it was symbolic. What he was asking them to do was symbolic. Now, if what was what God had, had, had set up to do, what God had planned. Now, I, I, I wonder if this victory would have taken place had this man not followed this instruction, had the king not followed instruction. But he did. You know, he did. So he got a word. He, wh whether people look at it like that or not, he got a word of prophecy. He got a word from, from, from the Lord, okay, through Elijah. And he said, shoot. So he opened it. Then Elijah said, shoot, and he shot. And he said, the arrow of the Lord's deliverance, God's going to deliver you, deliverance from Syria, for thou shalt smite the Syrians, the Syrians in Aphek till, thou, till you've consumed them. You will, God's going to be with you. you. You're going to smite them until you have consumed them. And then he said, now take the arrows, the, west, the rest of the arrows in, in, from the quiver. And he took them and he said unto the king of Israel, now smite upon the ground. Now listen, he told him, he told him, that he didn't give him any other information, just instruction, okay? No, no other help, no other hints, no nothing. 
He said, now take your arrows and smite. Take the, the, the bundle of arrows and smite on the ground. And he smote thrice and stayed. That means he stopped. He boom, 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 smote on the ground with, with these arrows that he'd already told him. See, the thing is, people have to learn to listen. Learn to listen. When he shot the first arrow, he said, that's the arrow of the, the Lord's deliverance. Now take the rest of now he, that that oh God anybody with a of, of any kind of spiritual mind would have okay deliverance in the arrows the Lord's deliverance symbolic in in, in the arrows so he then the, the prophet said take the rest of the arrows and smite on the ground and so so if you think the arrows are representing the deliverance of of God what would you do what would you do let's see what the king did the king did he smote three times and the man of God was wroth. He was angry with him. And he said, you should, he didn't tell him how many times to, to smite the ground with the arrows, but he got angry and told him you should have smitten uh, five or six times. Then you would have smitten the Syrians till you consumed them. Now you, you shall, since you only smote three times, you shall only defeat them thrice. You shall only defeat them three times. So when you do something, don't just do what you will. That's enough to get back. Okay, don't take life like that. <laughs> Try to look, especially if God is, is giving you, giving you uh, guidance or wisdom or encouragement, some kind of way. Don't, you don't want to just, just, just do enough to get back. You know, he smoked three times and he said, well, okay, that, that should be enough. Well, he, did, he, didn't, he didn't disobey the man of God. He did smite with the arrows, but no, okay, this is uh, a, Something that is coming from this bed, you know. The, 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 why is he telling me to smite on the ground with arrows? See, now I see that the arrows represent God's deliverance. Okay, so in me, this is for me in my life. So what am I? Then he says to smite on, on the ground with the arrows. He should have worn his him, himself out <laughs> smiting on the ground with that bundle of arrows. Don't just do enough to get by in life. You want to excel. You want to achieve. You want to exceed the norms. That's the way you want to approach life. And you want God to be with you that way. Don't, don't, don't just, just be a, don't, even, no matter what it is, you're giving or whatever, don't be a penny pincher. You know, some people have enough, but they, they don't enjoy life because they're afraid to, they're afraid. They're afraid to turn loose and enjoy. I'm, now, don't be a spendthrift, just, 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 just crazy and foolish. No, wasteful. You don't, you don't do that. But, but to live. And when it comes down to pre, uh, performing in the kingdom for the king, for God's sake, don't just do enough. And if you get a word from the Lord, don't just say, "Well, I did that." You know, I, or, or this is what the, the what the what the preacher said, or or whatever. And so that, that, that should be enough. Don't don't treat life like that. You give it all you got. You give it all you have, and I'm, I'm, tell, I'm telling you now, it'll, it'll pay off for you in life. You go above. You ever heard that, that saying? People using in the military, uh, the law enforcement, people above and beyond the call of duty. Some people do. They, they, they live that way. They live that way, and God rewards them. In, in the kingdom, in the kingdom of God, man, they, they go beyond just what's asked for. Praise the Lord. Let's, let, let's go here. So what are we going to do? Let's go very quickly. You've heard this a lot, so I'm, I'm not going to stay right here in the book of Psalms, the 84th chapter. And then we've got to read a couple of things. See, God's word's good. And, and it's got some, some rough stuff. We've got to get to the rough stuff too, okay? we get to the, the, the rough stuff too. We, we have to. We have to address it. But please, whatever you do, don't, don't turn loose what you've already heard. Now, the book of Psalms, Psalm 84. Uh, let's see if I can get some. Okay. All right. You've heard this a uh, uh, hundred times, 500 times at least. All right. We're just going to go down to the fourth verse. All right, here, here we are. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house, praising God. They will still be praising thee. They'll never quit. They'll never stop praising you. They'll never, they don't, didn't we have that the other week? I think we had that the other week about, now we'll do it from the 23rd time. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. 
You know, that's, that's what we should do. You know, to, to be a part of God's ministry, a part of God's family, a part of God's house forever. Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves again. And, and again, we're getting back. We're getting back. Don't rush it, okay? Let, let me tell you, don't rush it. Meanwhile, and some people who want to rush it, they're not really taking care of themselves. They're, they're not protecting themselves, okay? But I don't want to get off message here, okay? Let's, let's, let's keep going. Blessed is the man whose strength is in you, Lord, and whose heart are the ways of them. The ways of what? God's, the ways of God's word, the ways of your strength, the ways of your, your wisdom who passing through the valley of Baca. So we're going to pass through Baca sometimes. We're not meant to live in Baca or to stay in the, the, the valley of tears and suffering and, and weeping, but, but we're going to experience it. We're going to go through. And it says that we are to pass through. And we're to, we're to have that kind of thinking, that, that, that kind of insight that when, 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 when we do come to the valley, that, w that, we, that we don't fear evil for one thing, the valley of the shadow of death. And when we go through the, the valley of Baca, that we have to know that we're, this isn't forever, that we're passing through the valley of Baca and they make it a well and the rain will fill the pools. They go from strength to strength, praise God, from strength to strength, every one of them in Zion appearing before God. So we will experience the challenge. You're going to have that. So what are you going to do? Because, because challenge comes, because tribulation uh, uh, shows this is ugly head, trials of, of whatever, opposition, man, adversity. What are we going to do? Oh, my God, I'm just so overwhelmed. And some people get, and, and, and sometimes things can be overwhelming, but then they're, they're not overwhelming for the God. We, we believe, we serve, we have him, the God who we believe loves us. You know, it's not too much for him. So as long as our strength and our hope and our faith is in God, we, we work your life out. The, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. We keep talking about that. As for a reason, you got to work your life out. Don't expe uh, just expect everybody to do everything. And some people live that way. They want everybody to just have themselves all the time. You do for me. Uh, this, uh, no, it's not like that. Work your own and, and the rewards will come. It will come. God will be with you and God will bless you. So in, in the book of St. Luke, since we're dealing with, with time here, we're dealing with a little time. Got, got to get this to you too so we get get to the, to, the, to the other part of it, okay? All right, St. Luke, let's see here. Uh, 14. All right, St. Luke, the 14th chapter. See if I can get this. All righty. All right, St. Luke 14, and let's start here with the 28th verse. This is, is a parable, it's a, a couple of them, a couple of parables that Jesus spoke, talking talk about uh, the cost of, of really being his disciples. Some people start out, they can't, they can't, they don't finish. See, they, they want just to be a follower, you know? That's why when Jesus spoke certain words to people and it hurt them, he stepped on their toes. So the Bible teaches us that there's about 70 of them. Many of them turned back and stopped following him. They were not real disciples. They, they weren't learners. They didn't learn from him. They weren't rooted and grounded and, and, and connected with Jesus. They weren't one with him. No, no. They were, were, were temporary people who hung out for a while. And, they, and a lot of people proved that out. They don't really have the truth. I mean, the, 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 the character for truth's character to be displayed. I'm, I'm talking about word now, God's word, his, his stuff. Truth's character to be displayed in their lives. So he, he spoke this parable about it, telling people, you better consider what you say. You, if you say you want to be a, a, a disciple of mine, make sure that you know what you're talking about, you know, make sure. So he, he, he tells them this, and, and we can look at it. We, we take life's lessons from this also. He said this, for which of you intending to build a tower? You're going to build a, a, a house, a tower, whatever. You sit not down first and count the cost, whether you have enough sufficient to finish it. Less happily, after, after you've laid the foundation and you're not able to finish it, all that behold to begin to mock you. 
You, you start out like, like you're on fire, you know, like you're on fire. You lay the foundation like you're on fire and you're not able to build anything in life. So you want, you want to count the cost. You, you want to plan. Now, I'm, this is talking about discipleship. We're talking about your life too. Plan your life. Okay, make sure that, that, you, that you plan. You've heard it, you've heard it a, a, a hundred times. Those who plan to fail do what? I mean, who, don't, don't, those who fail to plan, really. You, 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 you fail to plan, you are actually doing what? Planning to fail. Some people know it. Some people say that all the time. It, it, it's true. You have to plan your life. You plan things out. Make sure if, if you, if you want to enter into, don't just think that, that because you want to do something. It was somebody w once told me long years ago that uh, uh, one, of my, one of my kids, okay, God see. Well, because anything, education was that important. I thank God, but God, God blessed them anyway. But uh, at that time, kids, you know, kids. I want to be an actor and I won't have to do all this. Well, actors have to know how to research. They have to know how to read. They, they have to, they, they have to, they, they must know, know how to follow uh, instruction. They, they, they have to know how, how to look into character and become that character and to display that character as real and who, who they are. And, and, and they remind me how some of the, the greatest actors of all time have been uh, educated men and women. Very, so it, 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 it's important. So th there's no getting by training. There's no getting by studying. There's no getting by educating yourself or making preparation for a career that you want to have in life. No matter what the career is, I don't care what it is, you know, that you, you have to make, you have to plan for it. And if you don't, you're not just going to miraculously wake up one day when you decide after having done nothing with years of your life, that when you reach a certain age or a certain time that you're going to become a, 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 a whatever it is you want to do, a, a, a carpenter or a construction person or a, a a, a doctor, a lawyer, whatever it is, you know, that you're going to become like a, 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 a bona fide electrician. That takes work, man. That takes knowledge. That takes skill. And all the while people are performing in their various disciplines, they're still learning. They never stop learning. And, that, and that's the way you want to be in life. You want to be a learner, okay? That's a true disciple, a learner, a learner. You, you want to continue to learn. So, because you, you can start off like you're on fire, like you, you can be, have all the enthusiasm you want, but if you don't have the right kind of enthusiasm, or enthusiasm enough to study, or to work toward a, a, a particular goal, you'll, it'll, it'll come to naught. It, it'll come to nothing. And then he said, a, a, a what king going to war to make war against another king? He sits not down first, and he consults whether, whether he would uh, be able with 10,000 be able to meet him that comes against him with 20,000. He gets some advice first. He makes some plans first. Or else while the other is yet a great, a great way off, he sends in a, an ambassador, some representatives, and desires con conditions of peace. He has a plan. He has a, a plan. If one falters or one fails, he has a plan. It didn't say that he surrenders to defeat. It didn't say that. He didn't say that at all, not, not at all. Not that he surrenders to defeat, no. He says that he has a plan for peace. He, sit, he, he tries to negotiate. So you have, you have to have, have your life ready. You have to make some plans for, for your life. Nothing is free and nothing just, uh, just happens. Opportunities will present, but you have to create opportunities. You have to do it. So let's, let's go on, okay? Uh, you've, you've heard the one about the, 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 the un unjust steward. You know, I might read a little bit of it. Now nah, we'll come back to it, maybe, maybe. But let's let's go here. Let's oh, let's go to Philippians. All right, the book of Philippians. Praise God. God is good. Philippians. Okay. Here we go. And let's see here. Praise God Almighty. Let's see, Philippians, the third chapter. We're going to go to the fourth chapter also and read a little bit. Third chapter. Let's read the seventh verse. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless, you put Jesus above everything. He, he, he's the... 
the, the center of your life, the, the forefront of your life. He, he, everything's about him. Yea, doubtless I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung. Have mercy. Listen, listen to this. So, but dung that I may win Christ. And then he, he says in the 10th verse, let's go down to the 10th verse, uh, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings be made conformable unto his, his death. If by any means I might attain to the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not already achieved who I am, everything I'm, I'm to be in Christ Jesus yet. I've, I've not reached that, that, that state of, uh, of, of resurrected perfection. He said, but this is what I do. But I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I want to accomplish, I want to achieve it for everything that I might be apprehended of Christ. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. Listen to this. Now, you can't erase uh, doings and dealings of the past from your memory, but you don't have to become a prisoner to the past, nor can you rest on your past laurels, your past accomplishments, or your past achievements, like that's enough and you fail to do more or you fail to move any further in life. You don't want to do that. You, but you, you keep moving, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth. You want to always reach for more and to do more, to reach more in, 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 into the glory of God and for the glory of God, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth into the things which are before. I press toward the mark. Listen toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So let us, therefore, as men as be perfect, be thus minded. Let's be of the same mind. And if anything you be otherwise minded, let's all be achievers, okay? And if anything you be otherwise minded, God shall, shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. And the book teaches us over here in, in the, the fourth chapter, I have, to, I have to read it since we're here. The fourth chapter, I'm not going to read all of it, just, just, the, just the eighth verse. And it says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, you want your life to, to be made up of good things. You, you want your, your, the, what you think on, what you study, what you do, things that are beneficial to yourself, beneficial to the kingdom, beneficial to society. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, Whatsoever things are just, that means right and good and fair. Whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, of good reputation, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. You, want, you don't want to let your mind wallow around in self-pity, what used to be, or what I could have been, or what I should, you, you don't want to do that. Or, or what you missed out on, or how hard your life, forget that. Depression, you don't want to, to send your, 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 your mind into a state of depression. You want to look forward to life. You want to look, look forward to God using you in, in life, and you take the gifts of God and move forward in your life. Now, we're about to close out, but I have to get Proverbs. We can't let Proverbs go here. Proverbs is a very, very good book. I love it. I love all of it. And I know many of you do too. So I'm, I know I'm just speaking in, in, in the midst of many voices saying the same thing. If people do. People love God's word. God's people do. They love it. So let's go to Proverbs, the sixth chapter. Let's see here. So I don't want to repeat, but we, 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 we'll, if we do, we do. Okay, Proverbs, the sixth chapter. Let's see what we have. All right. All righty. Proverbs, the sixth chapter. Starting with the sixth verse. All right, I think this shows up somewhere else, too. All right. 
And it, it, it tells us something. It gives us a, a lesson here. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. You know what a sluggard is. A sluggard is a lazy person. Lazy people won't make. Some people are too lazy to even think. You know, and, and they don't. You know, they, they won't think about life. They, people have, will have children and not think to take care of them, not think to provide for them, not think forward in life toward their future, not take the necessary steps they, it, with their lives to provide for them, you know, for, for future life. But anyway, the, the Bible says, go to the ant, thou sluggard, consider her ways, the, the way of the ant, and be wise, which having no guide or overseer or ruler provides her meat in the summer. Isn't that amazing? That, that's, that's just a, a truth. And gathers her, her food in the harvest. An ant will prepare for the winter. An ant gathers food, will we'll make it supply, and we should too. How many people have entered into the winter of their lives without, when, they, when it was summertime, when they were young and healthy and, and full of vitality, never made any provision for the winter years of their life at all? And people pay for that. I mean, sad. So that's, that's why those that do, be, be willing. Don't just look at people and say, well, you should have uh, gotten yours where I got mad. Don't, don't be like that. Don't, don't, be, don't be like that. If you can help people, help them. Okay? Don't help the, the people. You, you don't want to just help users. You just folks who don't. They, that's all they do It's going to use, 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 and laugh at you for helping them. You, yeah, okay, that's, well, it's up to you. But you want to be able to help other people. So, so, sometimes people run into situations in their life that, that, that might prevent them. For, from, from making certain kinds of, of preparation. And, and, and that, that, that's obvious. You want to help people, all the people you can. Some people aren't as fortunate as, as others. So you want to help. But you, you have to help, you, what, love your neighbor as yourself? So you've got to care enough about yourself, your own life, so you be able to love and care about other people too. You want to help take care of them too. So the Bible says this. We're going to, we're going to keep moving around in Proverbs. And it says uh, in the ninth verse, how long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? Some people will sleep every day, walking around sleep. They're not, they think that life will never change. They, they think that, they, that, that being irresponsible is never going to catch up with them. They're just doing just enough to get back. That it's always going to be great. It's not always going to be great. They're thinking that somebody's always going to be there to bail them out. That's not always the case. You don't want to live like that. You want to live your life in such a way where you be able to bail somebody else out. You know what I mean? You, that, that's, what, that's what you want to do. So it says, how long will you sleep, O sluggard? When will thou arise out of your sleep? Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. Just always, I don't feel like going to work today. I, I don't feel like going to college. I, I don't feel like studying. I don't feel like go, taking a trade. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't feel like, I just don't feel like being, uh, being a, 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 an understudy to somebody who can, can mentor me in electronics or electricity or, or, or carpentry mechanics. Or, well, I don't feel like, I don't, I, I don't want to take on uh, learning anything. It's just too much trouble. Wisdom, the Bible tells me, is too high for a fool. That's, that's in Proverbs 2. You, you look it up, you know? And, and, and then they find themselves, in this case right here, say, if you do this, and you never pay attention or, or put energy into your life, if you don't do everything you can right now with, with your might, to, to accomplish with your might, to prepare with your might, if you don't do it now, then the Bible says, so shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth, and you want as an armed man. Now, that's not talking about somebody who has the means <coughs> to travel. This is talking about a, a, a vagabond, a nomad, somebody who doesn't have the means. They can't take care of themselves. They just wander from place to place to place, hoping that somebody will pity them. You don't want to do I mean, have pity on other people, but you, you don't want to always live at the mercy of other folks because sometimes people can be, it's sad to say, but it's true, people can be cruel. So you come, you, you, poverty will come on you. It's two ways the Bible speaks about poverty in that respect. A person who doesn't like instruction, shame, poverty and shame be what they read, better be what they get. It's in, I believe, the 13th chapter of Proverbs, something along there. You, you find it, okay? So you want to be like the ant. 
and make preparation for your life as you go. Make plans. Be, be like the king that makes plans. Be like the person before they start to build a tower. They, they sit down and, and, and they determine, they make a plan, determine how they're going to build this tower. Step by step by step by step. You know, they're going to they're gonna reach their goals. They're going to have a plan step by step by step by step. So let's, let's keep moving. <laughs> Proverbs 13, I believe that's, that's it. We're going to read it right quick and we're going to... Mm. Keep moving here because we're about to close out. Don't forget, champions train. And opportunity does. You know, time and chance comes to them all. You know, opportunity presents itself to people. Some people aren't prepared to, 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 to accept the opportunity. I go through the doors of opportunity. And, and, but some, there are other people who they're prepared, they're ready, they're trained, they're, they're conditioned for it in whatever way you, you want to think of. The condition to to accept opportunity when it comes, when it presents itself, but not only that, they create their own opportunities. They make the, so that's the, that's the kind of person you want to be. So let's let's look at Proverbs thirteen. Just going to read a few scriptures here. Thir there it is, thirteen and eighteen. Poverty and shame shall be to him that refuses instruction. Some some might be somebody right now who might think that what we're talking about today here, what the Bible gives us. It's you, well, that, that's not for me. I don't need to hear that. Okay. All right. That's up to you. But poverty and shame will be them that refuses instruction, but he that regards reproof, correction in their life, a little help, a little extra push in life, that person will be honored. And this is what, when you accomplish your desire in life, the Bible says that the desire accomplished is sweet to the soul. But it's just, it's an abomination to fools. It's, it's extremely disgusting and hateful for a fool to depart from evil. Now, here we go. We're going to stay in Proverbs. We're going to close out in Proverbs and, and let it go here in just a minute. Proverbs, the 23rd chapter. Proverbs 23, 21. 23 and... 19, all right? Hear thou, my son, and be wise. Be wise, get some wisdom. And guide thine heart in the way, in the right way, in the right way, way of God. And, and uh, God's not ever instruct. He, he talked about joy. Jesus talked about it. Solomon talked about it. Uh, that, that's been our portion to live life and enjoy life. Okay, this, all is fine and good. You know, the joy of the Lord is our strength. We, we, we hear all this. So God wants you to enjoy your life, but he wants you to enjoy the good and, and do that which is right and good in the sight of God. He's not telling you to be some kind of standoffish, self-righteous wallflower. He's not, he's not saying that, you know, but you, you, just, you just do. You stay in the will and in the way of God. So be not among wine builders, just people just all they live for is the party, and, and among riotous gluttonous, Eaters of the flesh, for the drunken and the glutton shall come to poverty, and drowsiness shall clothe the man with rags. And some people live for the nightlife. That's what they live for. It. That's it. That's it. Parting, parting, parting. And, and, and therefore, they can't be productive in the daytime when they need to be. Now, and now drowsiness shall clothe the man with rags. If you work at night, that's different. So don't, don't think, well, I'm, I'm working at midnight. Say, okay, well, well, work at night and, and be productive in, in, in what you do and make some changes in your life later on. God, God will bless you. But people who need to be up, need to be around, moving around, uh, making some changes in life, uh, getting some employment, getting some projects going in your life, make sure you take care of your business. Because if you don't, if you don't take care of your own life, you drowsiness will do what? You, you're going to find yourself being clothed in rags and poverty. That's all that's saying. So let's, let's move on. We're going to, we're going to close out Proverbs uh, 24. I think it was just about it's the same thing. 24 and 30. And it says, uh, okay. And I went by the field of the slothful. He made an observation here. It's passing by the, the field, the life, the house of the slothful, a lazy person, person with no, no ambition, no desire, no, no zeal, no, no get up and go, someone who just doesn't want to do anything. He just let life happen. 
you know, that, okay, I went by the field of the slothful and by the vineyard of the man void of understanding. They just didn't know how things worked. They didn't, have, they didn't realize how life works. And then when people finally come to the realization of what's really happening to them in their lives, it's too late for them to do anything about it, to make any changes. And it says, and lo, I, I, I looked at this person. I looked at their life. I, I looked at their field. I looked at their house. And lo, it was all grown over with thorns and nettles that covered the face thereof. And, and the stone wall that, that was around the house, the, the fencing that used to be around the house, all nice and pretty, the stone wall thereof was broken down. So then I saw and considered it well. I thought about it. I, I thought about what I was looking at. at the, something that you could tell was once a thing of beauty had uh, uh, potential in it. And, and still, if somebody would, would just was, would take it up and treat it right and, 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 and build it right and, and make certain repairs and, and cleaning of, of this property. He said, I, I saw and considered it well. I looked upon it and received instruction. Look, and, and you can. Just you, you can't. See, you shouldn't have to always experience bad times. If, if, some people who've been through bad times, some people who've experienced hardship, you, you need to, to listen to the voice of experience for, for one thing. But you can look at, at life and look at people's lives, and it makes you wonder what happened to that person? What caused them? You know, don't judge, whatever you do, don't, don't judge. But this, 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 this man here said, I learned something from it. I, I looked at, at this property and I was taught a lesson. I was taught a valuable lesson. I received wisdom. I, I looked, I saw, and considered it well. I looked upon it and received instruction. Let yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep, a, a little putting off uh, until tomorrow what I can do today. A, li a little wait, a, a little putting off and procrastination here and there, and a, a little having no, no energy to do anything to make provision for my own life here and there. He says, I, I, I learned from that, from, from that life, from looking at, 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 at this scene right here. He says, little folding of the hands to sleep, just being lazy. So shall thy poverty come as one that traveling. You know what people do when they find this? They blame, their, they blame everybody else for the condition of their life. That's true. Some people are so st stubborn, they won't, they won't take responsibility for their own lives. They blame everybody and their grandma for, for them putting themselves in that certain predicament. You don't want that to be you. You want to help, be able to help lift people out of it. But first, you have to be able to take care of yourself. You have to do that. And it says again, so shall that poverty come as one that, that traveleth as you, and you want as an armed man. So you're going to have the trials. You're going to have the challenges. And remember, even champions always train. That's what the Bible tells us that we're learning everything. It blesses the man that endures temptation. When you go through, the, your life is going to be challenged. Things you believe in are going to be tested. When you say you believe, your, your faith is going to be tried. Everything that you say that's good and right that you want to do in life is going to be tested. You're going to go at some things. You're going to start out smoking sometimes like a, like a sprinter and fall. It's going to happen. But get up. It's your race. You finish it. Okay? You finish it. You're going to suffer disappointment. Let, let patience do a job on your life. The Bible tells us that too. Let, let patience, be patient, steady moving forward in the will of God, in the will of God with God's word, moving forward to what's good and what's right and, and, and wholesome and pleasant to do in the way of God, all, trusting no matter what, always trusting God and waiting to see the hand of God move in your life. I hope the, the message has been a blessing to you today. That's it. I, I pray that God has blessed you, that you've received it, and live, saints, live, live, enjoy life, and, and learn, learn every day. When, when you stop learning, you're gone, you're dead. That's it. Your life is over, you know. You might exist, but when you stop learning, you're gone. It's over for you. So be a participant with life, you know, and, and love God, acknowledge God always in all things, in all your ways, and he will direct your paths. I'll say goodbye until the next time, and may God bless you. Love you. Bye-bye.
You've been listening to the Words of Knowledge broadcast with Pastor Alan Harrington. If you would like to write Pastor Harrington, send all correspondence to Words of Knowledge, P.O. Box 11005, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37401. That's Words of Knowledge, P.O. Box 11005, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37401. Tune in next week for another Words of Knowledge broadcast.